Say you have a company and you were told that you have a revenue of 1 million pesos. Based on this figure alone, can you make a conclusion? Can you infer from that figure that you have earned enough? It would be difficult. We are going to need more information. Let's add other accounts from which revenues can be compared with. Let's use these figures. Since we have other figures to use for comparison, we can now infer something. We can conclude here that, yes, revenues have increased, but profit remained 200,000, just like the previous year, and therefore, profit margin declined. Rather than being misled that you are earning a profit just like last year, you now realize that your expenses are relatively higher and that is not good. And from here, you would ask what's the cause of the declining profit margin. These ratios help us identify questions to ask rather than provide answers. They help to highlight the financial strengths and weaknesses of a business, but cannot explain why those strengths and weaknesses exist or why certain changes have occurred. It's like there are dots, and those dots are provided by the financial ratios. And we are here to analyze it to connect the dots to form a conclusion. The ratios provide a starting point for further analysis. Only a detailed investigation will reveal the underlying reasons. Figures or amounts become useful only when compared to something else. It is like converting our raw data into information. Comparisons are essentially intended to shed light on how well a company is achieving its objectives. Ratios can be very helpful when comparing different businesses because scale of operations vary among them. A direct comparison, for example, the profit generated by a 7-Eleven store versus that of an SM supermarket may be misleading. Of course, because 7-Eleven is small, and can generate only a profit of say 10,000 and SM is a big store, uh, a supermarket, that's why it can generate a profit of 10 million. So there's a difference in scale. You cannot just compare them with their absolute values, absolute amounts. By expressing operating profit in relation to some other measure, for example assets, the problem of scale is eliminated. The comparison expressed in the form of ratio or percentage, eliminates the difference in scale of 7-Eleven and SM Supermarket. And in order to decide the types of comparisons that are useful, we need first to identify what do you want to evaluate. Let's say you want to evaluate your company's efficiency in using assets. Then we need to use efficiency ratios. If you want to assess your profitability, then use profitability ratios, and so on. Ratios can be grouped into categories, with each category relating to a particular aspect of financial performance or position. These five broad categories provide a useful basis for explaining the nature of the financial ratios to be dealt with. Profitability Businesses generally exist with the primary purpose of creating wealth for their owners. Profitability ratios provide some indication of the degree of success in achieving this purpose. They normally express the profit made in relation to other key figures in the financial statements or to some business resource. Efficiency ratios Ratios may be used to measure the efficiency with which particular resources have been used within the business. These ratios are also referred to as activity ratios. Liquidity ratios. It is vital to the survival of a business that there are sufficient liquid resources available to meet maturing obligations, that is, amounts due for payment in the near future. Liquidity ratios examine the relationship between the liquid resources held and amounts due for payment in the near future. Financial gearing refers to the relationship or ratio of a company's debt to equity. It shows the extent to which a firm's operations are funded by lenders versus shareholders. In other words, it measures a company's financial leverage. Investment ratios. These ratios are concerned with assessing the returns and performance of investments made into the business. Ratios can be expressed in various forms. For example, as a percentage or as a proportion. 
The way that a particular ratio is presented will depend on the needs of those who will use the information. Although it is possible to calculate a large number of ratios, only a few, based on key relationships, may be helpful to a particular user. Many ratios that could be calculated from the financial statements may not be considered because there is no clear or meaningful relationship between them. There is no generally accepted list of ratios that can be applied to the financial statements, nor is there a standard method of calculating many ratios. It is important, therefore, to be consistent in the way in which ratios are calculated for comparison purposes. The ratios that we shall discuss are very popular, presumably because they are seen as useful for decision-making purposes. See you in the next part.